Welcome to the first video of this channel, the Year 7 AP Spiral Assessment 1, the much anticipated, very excitable, very interesting video that I will be making, I'm sure the first of many, on all this terrific maths that is going on in this paper. Now, before I start anything, just to clarify a few points, at some point, in the link below, I'll put the timings of all the videos, so if you want to skip to each question, then I'll put them down in the doobly-doo, the link down below, down there. Secondly, if you're uncertain about any of these things, do feel free to contact me and I will help you and explain the answers to you as well, that's also fine. And then thirdly, just a bit of exam technique. If I was having a look at this, right, it says this paper is out of 63 marks. Well, 63 marks, and I got about 60 minutes in my lesson. What does that mean? That means I need to be spending about a minute a mark in the test. For the first question, and as you can see, I'm going to do it on paper because I've already worked out the answers underneath. The first question, question one. Write down the value of 7 in the number 9725. It's not very clear, so I'll write it again, down again. 9725. So what I do here is I literally just write this out. If I was uncertain, I'd write down my columns. Units, tens, hundreds, thousand. Where's my 7? It's in the hundreds, so I'd write... A, because I want to make sure my answer is really clear to the examiner. It's really important to make sure everything is nice and clear, because examiners are often not the most alert people, and they will miss stuff. Otherwise, A, underline, so you're like, hello examiner, I've done your question, give me all my marks. 700. Remember, in this case, generally it's best practice to write it as a word, to show you really mean it, rather than just being able to write 700. So answer, 700. It's good to underline it and be really neat when you do this. As you can see, my handwriting is not great. Apologies there, but what can you do? But largely, it's clear. I can still read it. The most important thing is clear, legible, because that means that your examiner likes you, because it means they're easy to spot the marks. And secondly, it makes you look a bit more clever, a little more organised. It's always good to give the impression you're organised, even if you're not in a test. Question two. How long will it take to save 376? If I save four pounds a week, well, sorry if the camera starts to go a bit funny, it's just because my hands are moving in front. So for this question, I could do two ways. Either I could write four, eight, and write my four times tables until I get to 376, because in the first week I'd have four pounds, and the second week I'd have eight pounds. Or, if you think about it, instead of multiplying up to find 376, I could just do 376 divided by 4. I'm just going to use my division algorithm here, just the division method. So, I put the number I'm dividing on the outside, and then put the number that's being divided on the inside. It's really good to make your handwriting nice, big, and clear. Firstly, because it helps you spot mistakes. Secondly, it makes it clear to the examiner what exactly you're doing. So I've done 376 divided by 4. So, first thing, how many times is 4 going to 3? Well, in this case, it's actually 300, but it's, I'm just going to see how many times is 4 going to 3. Zero times. So my remainder is 3. How many times is 4 going to 37? Well, if I was uncertain, I write my 4 times tables out. In this case, I know that 4 times 10 equals 40. That means that 4 times 9 equals 36. So I know 36 is lower than 37, but 40 is higher, so I know 4 goes in 9 times. And with a remainder of 37, take away 36, of 1. So I carry the 1, 4 into 16, equals 4. 94. Excellent. So my answer making it nice and clear, is 94. A few people made mistakes here because they just put 96. So key thing to do here is to check your answer. Just make sure, do it again if you want to. I could write it out again underneath and just skim through 
But re when you check your answer or redo it if you have time, really just do it. Don't don't try and pretend you're doing it. Don't just go, yeah, 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 this is all right, because that's not checking. You could also just do four times 94 if you wanted to check, because if four times 94, it should equal 376. I'm not going to do that now, only if you have time. Third question. Patrick was asked to work out the answer to 324, subtract 18. Here's what he wrote, and here's it revealed. So, explain in as much detail as you can the mistake that Patrick made. Firstly, if you're uncertain what to do and how to explain where he's gone wrong, just do the question yourself. So like I've done here, I'm just going to do the subtraction question to see where he's gone wrong. 324, take away 18. This can only help. When you do it, just make sure you lay out your columns so as you can see the units are lined up, the tens are lined up, and that is not there. Let's do it again, make sure it's really clear. Let's take away. So, oh well, the 4 is bigger than the 8, so I need to borrow from the tens column. So this is 1, and this one here is 1. So 14 take away 8 is 6. Then I've got 1 take away 1, which is 0. 3 take away, well this would be 0, there's nothing here. If I wanted to write, I could write 0. 3 take away 0 is 3, so my answer is 306. 306, what did Patrick go? Oh, Pat Patrick's got 314. So where has his answer differed? Well, his answer's differed because 4 take away 8, if I look here, it's given it 4, but I got 6. What's he done? Patrick has not borrowed from the above column. He's done 4 take away 8 and given 4. So he's flipped these the wrong way around. So then what I do is I write a nice neat sentence what Patrick has done wrong. And in fact, that will appear now. Patrick has not borrowed from the tens column for four minus eight. So we could put in brackets units. He has done eight take away four instead. And you could even put the correct answer is 306, just to make it really clear that you know he's wrong. Great. Now on to question number four. Question number four, write the following numbers in increasing order, i.e. start with the smallest one. So it's told us which order we need to put them in. It also might say sometimes the word ascending. So ascending, that just means increasing order. So I'm going to actually write it underneath smallest, largest just to make it clear to me where everything needs to go now this hasn't printed out very well how am i going to solve that well firstly i just asked the teacher secondly once the teacher has written it out i'm going to rewrite it nice and neat 0 0.54 0 0.405 0 0.45 and 0 0.4 now there are two ways i could solve this i like to use firstly you could use money to help you solve this one. So what I mean is have a look, 54, 40p, 45p and 40p. Which would I rather have? I'd rather have 54p. So that's the largest number. Then all of these are pretty similar. So I'm gonna write them above each other like this. 405, 0 0.45 and make sure all your columns are lining up nice and neat. Four. I can see that they've all got the same value in the temps column. And the higher the column, the higher the value. So these are all equal. So I'm going to need to go to the next column, which is the hundredths column, the hundredths column to compare. Well, this has got zero, this has got five, and this has got zero. So they're all equal in this column, but this one has got the most in the next highest column, the hundredths. So this is the next most valuable number. It's bigger than both of these. 45p is higher than 40 and 40p. So then the next largest is going to be 0 0.45. As I do this, I'm going to cross off just to make sure I've checked them all. Good. Then I've got 0 0.405 and 0 0.40. Well, they've got the same in the hundred tenths column, the same in the hundredths. So I need to look, go to the thousandths column. In this case, this has got five. This has got nothing. So which is bigger or smaller? Well, the 405 is 
bigger and 0 0.4 is the smallest. The other way I could do it, I was a bit uncertain, is I write them all out like this again, making sure my columns are really nice and neat. 0 0.45, 0 0.4, and then I just add in the zeros as placeholders underneath. So now which is big one? 540 is bigger than 405, so that's the largest. Then this is the largest, then this is the largest, then this is the largest. So I could compare by adding zeros in at the end, just so I could check them off. And now magically, my paper has changed because I found a clean one to actually work from. And on to question five. Bob says to multiply by 100, you should add two zeros. Do you agree with Bob? Explain why. Well, with this sort of question, I go by a free test rule. To meet, to test this out, I'm going to do three examples and see if it works. And I'm going to try and pick three different examples that work for it. So, firstly, think about what do we mean by multiply by 100? Well, the, what it's really referring to is that rule where if you've got 2, you times by 100. You just add two zeros and you get 200. So, I've done one example. It's worked. Let's think of a slightly different number. A good one to test it out on maybe would be something like 0. Let's try 0 times 100. Well, that doesn't work. 0 times 100. That's just zero. Anything times zero is zero. So that rule doesn't work for everything. And more commonly though, now not many people did this one, I should add. More commonly also, you could have gone to say 2.2 .2 times 100. Well, I know when I times by 100, I actually shift two places to the left. So I should get 220. If I added two zeros, that wouldn't work here, would it? Because if I put two zeros on the end of this, 2.0, and just put two more zeros there, it doesn't change the value. It's still two units and two tenths. It hasn't made it bigger. When if we multiply by 100, we've made it 100 times bigger. So with a question like this, that's what I do. I test out my theory, try and find an example either to agree or disagree. Then I could either write in this case, yes, I agree sometimes, but not always. It works for whole numbers which aren't zero, but it doesn't work for decimals. And then I'd write my example here, or I just write that I completely disagree, and I've already done one here. So in this example, what I've done is written, no, Bob is not correct. I would largely always just say no. If they've made a statement and it's not always true, then I'd say they're not correct rather than yes and no, just to be clear. When you multiply by 100, you move two columns up the units, e.g. 0 0.2 times 100 equals 20. So always whack in one example just to prove your point. Really hammer home that you're going to get that mark. For question number six, just an addition problem. What is the answer? Just phrased 455 weirdly. So it's just 455 plus 369. So first I just add my units columns, 5 plus 9. Well, that's going to be 14, so I'm going to carry my one. Now you can even put it here or here. I like to put it here because I don't get mixed up at the end. So I've got 5 plus 6 is 11, plus 1, 12. So 1 left, and then I carry the 1. So there we go. But I'm not carrying a 1, am I now? I'm carrying a 10 because it's 50 plus 60 plus 10. So 100 plus 400 plus 300 equals 800. And you should have got 824. Now, how do I check that answer, you ask? Well... I always look at the last two cot last two units. So in this case, the five and the foot, the five and nine, five plus nine equals fourteen. This ends in a four. This ends in a four. Probably right. Another thing I could do is I could estimate this. So round this one to one significant figure. So four hundred fifty-five would round to five hundred plus four hundred, so it should be nine hundred. This is quite close to nine hundred. So I've largely done an okay job. Good. Done.